Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to talk about some upcoming book releases that I am excited about that will be coming out in the latter part of 2022. Back in January, I did a video where I talked about book releases for 2022 that I was really excited about. At this point of the year, most of those books have been published. I've read a very good chunk of them. I'm hoping that next week I will be doing a video where I talk about whether or not I've liked the books that I thought I was anticipating or was anticipating in January. Uh, and I'm thinking I might do a second video, sort of like a spinoff of this, where I talk about some books that are coming out in the latter part of this year that I'm not quite sure I'm interested in. Let me know if you're inter interested in that because I haven't decided if I'm going to do it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. I am also going to put a link to my most anticipated video from January down below, but I'm, I will also put a link to a blog post that I am doing on this topic down below that will have a lot more information about each of the titles on this list if you want to seek out more information about them because I'm going to try to do quick some of them I'll do publisher blurbs some of them I'll just spitball some of them I'm sure you're already familiar with so we'll try to be quick as possible I don't want this to be a very long video but if you want more check those out and before we get started I will quickly say that if you are interested in any of these books that I talk about here I encourage you to pre-order a copy at your local independent bookstore that is something that is really helpful to your local independent bookstore. If you don't have a local independent that you like, I encourage you to pre-order through bookshop.org. That is a site that benefits independent bookstores in this country, and it's a great alternative to Amazon. And it's important to pre-order, one, because it helps support either bookshop.org or the independent bookstore, but it also tells the publisher how much demand there is for a particular book, which helps them know how many copies of that book to print. And with supply chain issues still out there, it's just a good thing in general. So let's dive into the list. The first book I wanna talk about, by the way, I'm gonna be doing this in chronological order, not the order in which I am excited about these books. And I'm gonna be starting with books that publish in August. So we're gonna start with August 1st and go to the end of the year. Books that will be released soon, two books that are a little further away. I do already have two books for 2023 that I am interested in, but I am not going to talk about them in this video. You'll have to wait to find out what those are. The first book I wanna talk about is Properties of Thirst by Marianne Wiggins. This will be published on August 2nd by Simon and Schuster. I'm gonna do the blurb from the publisher on this one. Rockwell, Rocky Roads. You get it, Rocky Roads has spent years fiercely protecting his California ranch from the LA Water Corporation. It is here where he and his beloved wife, Lou, raised their twins, Sonny and Stryker, and it is here where Rocky has mourned Lou in the years since her death. As Sonny and Stryker reach the cusp of adulthood, the country teeters on the brink of war. Stryker decides to join the fight, deploying to Pearl Harbor not long before bombs strike. Soon, Rocky and his family find themselves facing yet another incomprehensible tragedy. Rocky is determined to protect his remaining family and the land where they've loved and lost so much. But when the government decides to build a Japanese-American internment camp next to the ranch, Rocky realizes that the land faces even bigger threats than the L.A. watermen he's battled for years. Complicating matters is the fact that the idealistic Department of the Interior man assigned to build the camp, who only begins to understand the horror of his task after it may be too late, becomes infatuated with Sonny and entangled with the Rhodes family. Properties of Thirst is a novel that is both universal and intimate. It is the story of a changing American landscape and an examination of one of the darkest periods in this country's past, told through the stories of the individual loves and losses that weave together to form the fabric of our shared history. Ultimately, it is an unflinching distillation of our nation's essence and a celebration of the bonds of love and family that persist against all odds. So when Wiggins' last novel, Evidence of Things Unseen, was published a while ago, I believe it was published in 2004, it became a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. Part of my interest in this book is the curiosity of whether or not lightning is going to strike twice. But the story itself also sounds really interesting to me. But what really caught my eye about this book is a summary of uh, the book that Kirkus Review put at the top of its starred review. 
This majestic novel will satisfy those thirsting for an epic saga of love, family, and the complexities of the American way. I'm interested. What can I say? The next book will also be released on August 2nd. It's All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thangum Matthews. It will be published by Viking. From a brilliant new voice comes an electrifying novel of a young immigrant building a life for herself. A warm, dazzling, and profound saga of queer love, and you know that grabbed my attention, work and precarity in 21st century America. I'm going to distill part of the description from the publisher here. So Sneha graduates during a recession, but she manages to get a job. She makes friends. She's making money. She can send money back to her family in India. She starts dating a woman. And then things start to spin out of control. That's where I'll jump back in. But before long, trouble arrives. Painful secrets rear their heads. Jobs go off the rails. Evictions loom. Sneha struggles to be truly close and open with anybody, even as her friendships deepen, even as she throws herself headlong into a dizzying romance with Marina. It's then that Tig, her friend, begins to draw up a radical solution to their problems, hoping to save them all. A beautiful and capacious novel rendered in a singular, unforgettable prose. All This Could Be Different is a wise, tender, and riveting group portrait of young people forging love and community amidst struggle and a moving story of one immigrant's journey to make her home in the world. So I admit I was a little suspicious of this book when I first heard about it and a little nervous when I first read the description of it because... There's no delicate way to say this, but novels about finding yourself in young adulthood can be a bit precious sometimes. They can be a little bit, na bit naive. They can be a little bit infuriating. All of those things can be true. The queer angle really had me intrigued, but I wasn't sure if it was something that was going to infuriate me or something I would really love until I saw another starred reviews from Kirkus, which calls this book resplendent with intelligence, wit, and feeling. So yeah, I'm interested. The next book is Babysitter by Joyce Carol Oates. This is going to be published on August 23rd by Knopf. I've been on a roller coaster with Joyce Carol Oates in the past. I love her novella Blackwater. I did not like Blonde to the point where I didn't finish it. And I, the only other book of hers that I've read was Zombie, which felt like one of those writing exercises. It didn't quite come together for me. I wasn't really sure about it. But she's a mainstay of American literature. And I feel like I always want to give her a chance. And there's certainly when she's on, she's on, I think. And it's just a matter of finding the books where she's on. She publishes a lot. Here's the description of this book from the publisher. From one of America's most renowned storytellers, the best-selling author of Blonde, comes a novel about love and deceit and lust and redemption against a backdrop of shocking murders in the affluent suburbs of Detroit. In the waning days of the turbulent 1970s, in the wake of unsolved child killings that have shocked Detroit, the lives of several residents are drawn together with tragic consequences. Suspenseful, brilliantly orchestrated, and engrossing, Babysitter is a starkly narrated exploration of the riskiness of pursuing alternate lives, calling into question how far we are willing to go to protect those whom we cherish most. In its scathing indictment of corrupt politics, unexamined racism, and the enabling of sexual predation in America, Babysitter is a thrilling work of contemporary fiction. Part of what makes this intriguing to me is that Joyce Carol Oates has been a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize five times. She's basically the Susan Lucci of the Pulitzer because she's never actually won. Some of her work is a tough sell for Pulitzer, and this could be as well if it leans really hard in the direction of a sort of thriller, which it sounds like it could potentially. But it does sound interesting, and if she leans harder into a sort of allegory about the state of America and racism and politics, it could be a novel that flirts with genre that really catches the attention of the Pulitzer board. I do have access to an e-galley of this book through Edelweiss, and I look forward to seeing how it is now that we are starting to approach the date in which it will be published. The next book publishes on August 30th, and I'm going to skip a word in the title because it has a curse word. It's not that I'm a prude about cursing. I'm a native New Yorker. If you know me in real life, I curse all the time, probably too much. But I once got a strike for language content on one of my YouTube videos. 
where I didn't actually curse, and that has made me completely paranoid about cursing in my videos. But I will put the cover up here so you can see what the full title is. The book is Didn't Nobody Give a Blank What Happened to Carlotta by James Hanaham. Again, this is published on August 30th by Little Brown. For this one, I'm only going to read the first paragraph of the description because I think that will sum up exactly why I'm interested in it. From the author of the Penn Faulkner Award winner Delicious Foods comes the raucous, irreverent, and harrowing story of a trans woman's re-entry into life on the outside after more than 20 years in prison over one consequential 4th of July weekend. Sold, 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 sold. I do have access to an e-galley of this on NetGalley as well, and again, now that the date of publication is approaching, I look forward to diving in and seeing if it is as good as I'm really hoping it is. Part of the difficulty of doing things like this is it's really easy to latch onto books that everybody's going to be talking about because the author is really known, well known, or the book is really well known, or it's part of a series, and trying to balance that and finding new books authors that are unknown to you, books that might have flown under your radar. And part of why it's difficult to do that is that you also naturally gravitate toward the things that you have heard of. I'm really hoping that this will be a good discovery book. The next book on my list is one of those books that everybody is already talking about and is guaranteed to be a bestseller. It's The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, which will be published on September 6th by Kanaf. So I think you know exactly why I'm intrigued by this book. It's probably the same reason you are intrigued by this book, if you are intrigued by this book. I am not going to do the publisher's description of this because I did a full video reacting to the announcement of this book, and I will link that video in the description box down below if you would like to check it out. Somebody was really upset in that. I can't remember if it was in the comments or on Twitter or what. But somebody was really upset because they felt like the description of this book is a spoiler. So part of why I'm not going to be doing the description here is that if you want to avoid knowing much about this book, maybe don't look into descriptions of the book. On the other hand, it's based on a historical figure and it is known what happened to that historical figure. So it's not, it's a little difficult to cry spoiler. That's all I'm going to say. But if you want to go in not knowing a whole lot about it, I won't talk about it right now. All I will say is that it follows um, the de' Medici family in the 1550s, specifically a woman named Lucretia, who is the third daughter of the Grand Duke. Her sister dies on the eve of her wedding day, so Lucretia is sort of forced to stand in for her sister, and it's about the trouble that she experiences as a result of that. It sounds like it has total Hamnet vibes, Loved Hamnet. I am so in and excited for this book. I have it pre-ordered at Montana Book Company, and I just can't wait. The next book is The Unfolding by A.M. Holmes. This will be published on September 6th as well by Viking. Here is the blurb from the publisher. In her first novel since the Women's Prize award-winning May We Be Forgiven, A.M. Holmes delivers us back to ourselves in this stunning alternative history that is both terrifyingly prescient, deeply tender, and devastatingly funny. The big guy loves his family, money, and country. Undone by the results of the 2008 presidential election, he taps a group of like-minded men to reclaim their version of the American dream. As they build a scheme to disturb and disrupt, the big guy also faces turbulence within his family. His wife, Charlotte, grieves a life not lived, while his 18-year-old daughter, Megan, begins to realize that her favorite subject, history, is not exactly what her father taught her. In a story that is as much about the dynamics within a family as it is about the desire for those in power to remain in power, Holmes presciently unpacks a dangerous rift in American identity, prompting a reconsideration of the definition of truth, freedom, and democracy, and exploring the explosive consequences of what happens when the same words mean such different things to people living together under one roof. So on the one hand, this book really sounds like it could trip all of my anxiety buttons, thanks to the news cycle since 2016. But I have heard good things about May We Be Forgiven, which is a Women's Prize winner. I'm always intrigued by very American books or Americana books because, you know, Pulitzer. 
So this seems like one that I'm going to need to try. The fact that they describe it as funny will hopefully help. I was granted access to an e-galley of this on NetGalley, and hopefully I will be getting it, getting to it soon. And we'll see how it goes. If it makes me really, really stressed, or if it is enjoyable, and all of that. The next book is Less is Lost by Andrew Sean Greer, which is going to be published on September 20th by Little Brown. I'm breaking my rule a little bit because I mentioned this is something I could potentially be interested in when I did my most anticipated video from January, which again is linked down below. Here's why I'm bringing it up here. I have decided that it's cute for me to pretend that I'm a little annoyed that there's a sequel to this book that sounds so much like the plot of the first book, which was called Less. But I'm always going to be intrigued in reading it. Because it's the sequel to a book that won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. And even though I'm not convinced that Less deserved to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction, it was a cute book. It was a queer story. So I'm always going to be interested in that. And why deny that I'm going to be curious? I'm probably not going to rush out to read Less is Lost, like, as it is published. But of course I'm going to be curious. I mean, of course. So why deny it? It is what it is. The next book is Best of Friends by Camilla Shamsi, which is going to be published on September 27th by Riverhead. Here is the blurb from the publisher. From the acclaimed author of Home Fire, the moving and surprising story of a lifelong friendship and the forces that bring it to the breaking point. Zara and Mariam have been best friends since childhood in Karachi, even though, or maybe because, they are unlike in nearly every way. Yet they never speak of the differences in their backgrounds or their values, not even after the fateful night when a moment of adolescent impulse upends their plans for the future. Three decades later, Zara and Miriam have grown into powerful women who have each cut a distinctive path through London, but when two troubling figures from their past resurface, they must finally confront their bedrock differences and find out whether their friendship can survive. Thought-provoking, compassionate, and full of unexpected turns, Best of Friends offers a riveting take on an age-old question, does principle or loyalty make for a better friend? I admit I find that question intriguing. So, Camilla Shamsi's previous novel, Home Fire, won the Women's Prize for fiction. I've heard a lot of really great things about it, but I never got around to reading it. So, maybe I'm going to have better luck with her new book, which really grabs my attention with that description. And the next book is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Eng. This will be published on October 4th by Penguin. I'm not going to do the description of it in full. I will just say that it follows a character in a world where... Authorities are now allowed to relocate the children of dissidents, especially those of Asian origin, and libraries have been forced to remove books seen as unpatriotic, including the work of the main character's mother, who is a Chinese-American poet who left the family when he was nine years old. He gets a mysterious letter, which leads him to potentially reconnect and question, and maybe he can start leading change in the world. I think this is another thing that feels like it could trip anxieties about the world, especially since guaranteed this book was published before people started challenging books so hardcore and before there was a lawsuit brought against genderqueer um, and all of that stuff. But I did read Little Fires Everywhere, which was Celeste Dang's previous novel, and I confess I did have some quibbles with it. Quibbles that I, interestingly, thought that the TV adaptation smoothed out a bit. But I liked it enough to see what Eng has in store next, and that the description of this book sounded timely in a way that could be very interesting, and timely in ways that Celeste Eng could not have fully prepared for. So, I'm interested. The next one is The Hero of This Book by Elizabeth McCracken. This will be published on October 4th by Echo Press. I'm going to do the blurb for this one. Ten months after her mother's death, the narrator of the hero of this book takes a trip to London. The city was a favorite of her mother's, and as the narrator wanders the streets, she finds herself reflecting on her mother's life and their relationship. Thoughts of the past meld with questions of the future. Back in New England, the family home is now up for sale. Its considerable contents already winnowed. The woman, a writer, recalls all that made her complicated mother extraordinary, her brilliant wit, 
her generosity, her unbelievable obstinacy, her sheer will in seizing life despite physical difficulties, and finds herself wondering how her mother endured. Even though she wants to respect her mother's nearly pathological sense of privacy, the woman must come to terms with whether making a chronicle of this remarkable life constitutes an act of love or betrayal. Again, an interesting question that really caught my eye. The hero of this book is a searing examination of grief and renewal and of a deeply felt relationship between a child and her parents. What begins as a question of filial devotion ultimately becomes a lesson in what it means to write. At once comic and heartbreaking with prose that delights at every turn, this is a novel of such piercing love and tenderness that we are reminded that art is what remains when all else falls away. Elizabeth McCracken first caught my eye with her story collection, The Souvenir Museum, which was long listed for the National Book Award last year. I didn't get around to reading that, but I heard really good things about it. It sounded interesting. but And because I had he heard such good things about it, her name jumped out to me when I was looking at books that were um, coming up to be released. And while I'm not sure I'm going to emotionally be ready for a book that deals so heavily with grief and death... I am really intrigued by its premise. It sounds like it could be a little beautiful. The next book is Demon Copperhead by Barbara King Solver. I'm so excited. It's going to be published on October 18th by HarperCollins. Here is a short blurb. Demon Copperhead is set in the mountains of southern Appalachia. It's the story of a boy born to a teenaged single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks and copper-colored hair, acoustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in his own unsparing voice, he braves the modern perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through all of it, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. Most interesting about this is that David Copperfield is cited as the inspiration for this book. I've never read David Copperfield, but I have read books by Barbara Kingsolver before. I absolutely love The Poisonwood Bible. If you have not read The Poisonwood Bible, what are you doing with your life? try to fix that as soon as possible. I've also really enjoyed The Bean Trees and her most recent book, which was Unsheltered. I also think the idea of adapting a Victorian story about a boy struggling through poverty to Appalachia is an interesting idea. It could be a very good fit, and I'm very excited to see how it turns out. That takes us to Liberation Day by George Saunders. This is a story collection that will be published on October 18th by Random House. I'm only going to read the last part of the blurb for this one because odds are you know who George Saunders is. You've already made up your mind about whether or not you like him, and that means you've already made up your mind about whether or not you're going to be interested in this book. Together, these nine subversive, profound, and essential stories coalesce into a case for viewing the world with the same generosity and clear-eyed attention Saunders does even in the most absurd of circumstances. So I confess I found George Saunders last story collection, 10th of December, to be pretty overhyped. But I found his last novel, Lincoln and the Bardo, to be beautiful. It won the Booker Prize. It's because of my enthusiasm for the latter that I actually pre-ordered this book at Montana Book Company. And it's going to be really interesting to see if I like it, like Lincoln and the Bardo, or I think it's just fine, like 10th of December. The next book is Seven Empty Houses by Samantha Schweblin, translated by Megan McDowell. This will be published on October 18th by Riverhead. This sounds like it's an early collection of Samantha Schweblin's that is being translated into English. It promises that in, now in English it will pu push her cult status to new heights. Seven Empty Houses is an entry point into a fiercely original mind and a slingshot into Schweblin's destabilizing, exhilarating literary world. So like George Saunders, I've been on a bit of a journey with Samantha Shreblin. I loved her novella, Fever Dream, even though I'm pretty sure I didn't understand a lot of the stuff that happens in that book. I was less enthused by her story collection, Mouthful of Birds, which was translated into English. But I'm still willing to give this a try. It sounds interesting, so I will be looking for it at some point. Next, we have Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran, publishing November 1st by Atria. I can feel you judging me already, 
and I am immune to your judgment. I don't care. So this book follows Ellie Oliver, who has a dream job, and she has a meet-cute with another woman in a bookstore, but then the next morning uh, there's a betrayal. She loses her job not long after. A year later, she's working at a local coffee shop, and then the shop's landlord gets her to agree to pretend to be his girlfriend when he goes home for Christmas. She shows up, and of course, it turns out the landlord's sister is the woman from the meet cute, and romantic complications ensue. So why is this here? Well, you can't be serious all the time. Sometimes you need some cinnamon bun energy in your life. I mean, it's a queer holiday rom-com. I am all about that. And if you want to judge me for that, that's on you, not me. I'm excited for this. I actually have an e-galley of this on NetGalley. Can't wait. I'm not going to wait until the holiday season. I'm going to try to read it this summer because I'm all in. And I don't care what you think. The next book kind of feels like a cheat because it's already been out in the UK at least, but it's Foster by Claire Keegan. Its US release date is November 1st, and it's gonna be published by Grove Atlantic. Here is the blurb for this one. It is a hot summer in rural Ireland. A child is taken by her father to live with relatives on a farm, not knowing when or if she will be brought home again. In the Kinsella's house, she finds an affection and warmth she has not known and slowly in their care begins to blossom. But there is something unspoken in this new household where everything is so well tended to and this summer must soon come to an end. So Claire Keegan's exquisite novella, Small Things Like These, was published in the United States around the same time last year. So it's not really surprising that they're now releasing one of her older titles and maybe hoping for lightning to strike twice. I've heard really good things about this book from people in the UK who have read it. I can't wait. Small Things Like This is a book that really proves how powerful novellas can be, and I'm hoping that this novella will do the same. Next is The Magic Kingdom by Russell Banks, which is going to be published on November 8th by Knopf. This is the last book on my list. Here is the blurb. From one of America's most beloved storytellers, a profound novel about belief, betrayal, and the transformation of one corner of the country. In 1971, a property speculator named Harley Mann begins recording his life story onto a reel-to-reel -reel machine. Reflecting on his childhood in the early 20th century, Harley recounts that after his father's sudden death, his family migrated down to Florida's swamplands, mere miles away from what would become Disney World, to join a community of shakers. Led by Elder John, a generous man with a mysterious past, the colony devoted itself to labor, faith, and charity, rejecting all temptations that lay beyond the property. Though this way of life initially saved Harley and his family from complete ruin, when Harley began falling in love with Sadie Pratt, a consumptive patient living on the grounds, his loyalty to the Shakers and their conservative worldview grew strained and ultimately broke. As Harley dictates his story across more than half a century, meditating on youth, Florida's ever-changing landscape, and the search for an American utopia, the truth about Sadie, Elder John, and the Shakers comes to light, clarifying the past and present alike. A dazzling tapestry of love and faith, memory and imagination, the Magic Kingdom questions what it means to look back and accept one's place in history. With an expert eye and stunning vision, Russell Banks delivers a wholly captivating portrait of a man navigating Americana and the passage of time. So Russell Banks is in a similar situation to Joyce Carol Oates. He has been a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction twice, but never won. As he heads into the twilight of his career, you do have to wonder if he can catch the attention of the Pulitzer board. This book sounds fascinating, and like a true slice of Americana, if it plays into that, maybe it can. And because it is a slice of Americana, and I'm so interested in the Pulitzer Prize... It naturally sounds really interesting to me. I do have access to an e-galley of this on NetGalley. I can't wait to dive in. I'm really excited about this book. Those are all of the books that I am most anticipating for the remainder of 2022. Of course, other books will come up that I haven't even heard of right now or might not even be considering. I would love it if you would tell me what books you are most looking forward to in the latter part of this year. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you have thoughts about any of these books. Let me know that as well. And let me know if you would be interested in a video about the maybes, the books that I'm not sure I'm going to be into. I will leave it at that for now. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.